Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, several weeks ago I did a three-part video on how to fine-tune a 4x6 imported horizontal bandsaw. Uh, there was a bunch of these made, sold under several different names, and uh, but they all have their own particular quirks and defects. Uh, this one here is fairly new and it had one defect that I really had a hard time dealing with and I've created a pretty easy fix for it and I covered that in part two of the uh, fine tuning videos but anyway let me show you what I'm talking about okay right here's the elevating plates I had made they're laser cut and they gave me a really good deal on it uh, on the laser cutting and I managed to keep the price under thirty dollars each plate will include the spacer and two countersink bolts, socket head screws. You'll have to countersink the plate and uh, the reason I didn't countersink them is because it makes it hard to transfer the hole position. So let me show you what's involved in putting this plate on and why it's necessary. Okay we're looking at my saw with the elevating plate installed and just briefly and this is covered in part one and two of the video so I encourage you to watch it. Uh, just briefly, these blade guides should do nothing more than rotate the blade to the vertical position. Well, when I got this saw, these blade guides were also pushing the blade down, which really puts a lot of extra stress on the blade. And uh, when I set the blade guides up correctly, it wouldn't cut all the way through the stock. You might be saying, well, why don't you just adjust the down, down stop, which is what I did. But then the, the cover hit the base and the switch didn't operate right. So to compensate for that I came up with this plate. And uh, we're going to go through what's involved with installing this plate. And, uh, but be sure and watch part one and two. And I'll put the link underneath the video uh, to, to a web store I created where you can buy these plates. Okay, you're looking at the elevating plate after it's installed. But I'm going to go through what it's going to take to install your plate if you buy one. Okay, there's the original saw. Okay, when you get your plate, that's what it'll look what it'll look like. What you need to do is lay it on there like that. Take the bolt from your uh, clamp, the stationary jaw rather. See that's what held that right there. And that sets your position. This or pretty much holds it. You want to make this slot parallel here. And once you got this positioned exactly where you want it, take a quarter inch transfer punch. If you don't know what a transfer punch is, you need to get some. You can get some cheap ones for about 20 bucks for a full set. They come in all the drill sizes. Anyway, this is a quarter inch hole. And the way they're made, when you put the punch in there, it centers where you, where you make that center punch. So you just transfer the holes. Remove the plate. Of course, I've already installed a plate and the, the hole spacing was slightly different. But then you drill a number seven drill and a quarter twenty tap. Then you'll have to countersink those holes and use the supplied bolts to mount the plate. Okay, I've left this extension on the plate. And the reason I did that, after you mount that and get all your clamps back on there, I actually just mount it. Take your saw and cut through that plate right there. Take that extra piece 
and mount it right there. Now I did not put any holes in it. I used uh, the little set screw for that depth stop. Used to be right there. The, you always had to dig the uh, metal shavings out of it to get a, an Allen wrench in there. But anyway, I drilled a hole from the side to uh, control that depth stop. Anyway, I used that hole. It was kind of tricky to, to uh, locate that position. Then I had to drill another hole here. But you'll do, you can do whatever you want there. Uh, you'll notice on, on the saw, on mine, it was kind of an afterthought on my original here. I got a big gap in there. There's no reason for that big gap. I just leave about an eighth inch with the piece that you cut off there and just mount it to this area. You could probably even glue it if you wanted to do some kind of uh, super glue adhesive. Anyway, after you get the holes drilled and, and these countersunk, just put it back together. Just disregard that hole. That hole was in the steel that I made mine out of. There's a little spacer plate. goes right there for your movable jaw. And then you're ready to go. Uh, finish assembling it. Put your stationary jaw on there. But anyway, that's all there is to it, and uh, I've put a link underneath the video to my web store. It's a, a cheap web store, but it's a secure way to do a transaction. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with the web store. Here's what you get. You get the spacer and two screws and the plate for $29.50. The people that cut this out for me did a really good job, and they gave me a good deal. Uh, hopefully if I sell all these I can get it for the same price in the future, but who knows. Uh, I'll put a link below this video to a template that you can print out to make sure this is going to match your bandsaw. You need to print it out and check, see if these holes line up. Uh, and there's a link to the web store and uh, to the first two or three videos uh, on fine tuning your bandsaw. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, thanks for joining me and be sure and subscribe.